Yes, yeah, so hope you're all keeping safe and doing well. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. Okay. okay, so obviously, um, our guest is an industry giant. So I want to learn how she was able to navigate the roles, going through her profile, the various multinationals she has worked with, what um what strategies she used to uh, in, to ensure her success in um in the various industries, and just to hear and discuss her experiences. So at the end of the hangout, obviously I want to leave a more seasoned professional and um, learn some ropes that I also try to practice in my career. All right, Cynthia, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you, Cynthia. Yeah, thank you. All right. Yeah. So um, for the next person who is going to be coming up, um, I think we can start with a brief introduction. So you can just tell us your name and um, the, your, your current sector, you know, where you work in your department and for how long you've either been in sales and marketing. So my name is Ella. I've been in sales and marketing for five years now. And these are my expectations for today. And this is why I consider today's meeting a must attend. So um, I'm going to be taking other people. Um, let me look for another familiar name. Please forgive me in advance. Hi, Harriet. Harriet, would you like to share with us um, your expectations for today, you know, and then why you actually attended this meeting and also introduce yourself at the beginning. Over to you, Harriet. Well, hi, Ella. Hello, Ella. Hi, Harriet. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, my name is Harriet Ogotade. My name is Harriet Ogotade. Okay. I work with a pharma industry here in Lagos, Nigeria. Yeah, um, number one thing for me that attracted me, especially on this very um, episode of um, Hangouts with Industry Giant, is that our facilitator is um, a female. I, I am always excited when I see females breaking boundaries and, um, you know, looking up to them. It's, in fact, when um, Madame Ife posted it, that was the first thing I said, that, oh, thank God we have a female now because everybody knows that we females have a lot of things in common. So how she was able to manage being a wife, a mother, and, if, and very successful at um, a career, and she's even at the peak of her career, and she's even good in cooking again. So for me, it's a complete package. So I'm really here to, to learn how she was able to navigate all that, considering the hurdles of motherhood, being a wife and all that, how she was able to keep up in her career without distraction. And if, if, if all, there were distractions, and she, there were distractions, she did not still lose focus. So that is exactly what I'm here to take a cue from her and be able to work on it and see how far I can go as well. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing, Harriet. Thank you, Cynthia. I'm sure that, um, Madam Iko is listening and I'm sure she can't wait to jump on um, all of this already. Thank you, Harriet. I do hope that, and I trust actually, that at the end of um, this meeting, your expectations would be fully met. Okay, so we have um, two hands raised at the moment. Fantastic. So I'd like to take Dodger first. Hi, Dodger. Pardon if I didn't mention that very well. That's fine. That's not a problem. So hello, everyone. My name is Dodger Ikeruche. Hi, Ella, and hello, everyone on the call. Uh, I'm driving, so just in case the network keeps flipping up and down, uh, pardon me. So um, I have worked with uh, Ms. Luko for many, many years. She has been my boss. She has been my mentor, uh, mentor uh, work-wise, career-wise, and also a mentor in my personal life. Um, I've followed her in every single uh, social media, and I have close interactions with her. Uh, that said, it is that every single time that I have interacted with her, there's always a nugget. There's always something new to learn. And that's why I joined, because I know that again today, uh, there will be something new to learn. She's amazing at balancing uh, life and work. And right now, I think uh, I'm in that uh, peak in my life where I need uh, even a whole lot more balance. So I believe that uh, learning from her today 
uh, there will be more to, to execute in my life that uh, further enhances the quality of my life and uh, my family and the rest of the people around me. Thank you. Beautiful, Dodger. Thank you so much. Um, you not only shared your expectation, actually, you also just um, in, um, increased my level of excitement, actually. Um, I'm looking forward to learning all that you've been able to learn so far, and then uh, much more that she's going to be having for us today. Thank you so much for sharing. All right, so I'll be taking um, Sadiq Odetunde next. Hi, Sadiq, over to you. Kindly share with us um, your expectation. And don't forget to introduce yourself and for how long you've been in your sector. Hi, Ella. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just like hey, um, Ella rightly said, uh, my name is um, Sadiq Odetsundi, and I'm an acting brand manager in, um, in the leading FMCG here in Lagos. Um, when I saw the flyer and I saw the guest speaker, I went um, to LinkedIn to check out and I saw, wow, how wealth of experience. I saw a command in, in, in marketing, a marketing guru. And, you know, people like this is always a, it could be a one in a lifetime opportunity to have a session with them, to be able to ask them questions openly. Um, it, is, um, it is a very rare opportunity. So uh, that is why I said this is a must. This is a must join for me. This session, I must be there. And so for my expectations, I want to know how she has managed to stay re relevant over the years, how she managed to get to the top of, uh, of the marketing, uh, marketing profession. So basically, those are my expectations. Thank you, Ella. Okay, Sadiq, thank you so much for sharing with us. I am looking forward to that as well, um, being in marketing. But then I see that also if we look at her profile, she's been able to actually um, try her hands on, you know, different aspects other than marketing as well, one way or another. So um, there's going to be so much learning today, and I am just all ready for this. Um, would we have more people who would like to share with us their expectations? Um, at the moment, you could just raise your hand and then unmute. Um, I do not have uh, more okay. hands raised at the moment. Okay, over to you. Okay. And thank you so very much, Ella, for um, starting up the session today. And um, good afternoon again to everybody, especially our giant for today, for today's uh, tea time session. Thank you so much, ma'am, for honoring the invitation. I'm sure uh, maybe one or two people will be curious why uh, Mrs. Upo, uh, why, why, why did we bring her today? Uh, my story, uh, you know, as it links to her, it's um, a bit different. I am someone who admired her from, uh, admi admires her from afar. Uh, while I was um, at Nestle, where she um, also had worked, and she's one of those people, when you, one of the people you look at and say to yourself, if she can, then, I mean, if she could have attained such eye, then that means it's, it's easy for me. I can do it also. And I remember a particular time, she probably wouldn't remember. Um, I'm not sure what the occasion was, but she had um, a number of us young professionals then uh, come to her office and then she told us a bit of her story. And one picture that I have so great in my head is, um, of her receiving an award uh, from Bill Clinton. That, that particular, that picture always stays in. Mama, do you remember? I'm sure you would, you would. So I'm sure, uh, maybe I should ask people who yes, I do. at Nestle. So that for me, it's a picture that I have not gotten out of my head and I don't think I would. Saying if a woman can do this, breaking all the, shattering all the glass ceilings and making things happen, she was a force. You know, when you when you say someone is a force, she defines a force for me. So, I, and from afar, she probably wouldn't know. I've never probably told her, but I take things from her. I can actually say she's my mentor from afar, and she's a big influence on my career journey. Uh, thank you so much for being here on uh, today's session. And um, I want to use a moment to also welcome everybody to uh, this um, um, edition of Hangouts with Industry Giant. Uh, it's great to have you here. Um, for you to be here, one thing that it means to me is um, everyone who are clicked on the link and joined this meeting uh, is committed to continuous development and lifelong learning. So, and I have no doubt that you would reap the value of uh, every time spent um, on every of the 
series of our webinars, especially this, this one. So welcome to everyone from across the globe and uh, continents of the world. I, I see that from the registration we have a over 170 registration and uh, well i'm wondering what the issue is i have been having some bit of network challenges today in the past two hours um i actually plan to share uh, a video that we made for um, uh mama people today but that has not been happening but maybe before the end of the of the session so we'll just do all we can manually today um well done to the organizing committee too. Ella, um, Atoye Bioye Leri, Uluwole Dada, Sadiq, um, Harriet Ogutade, uh, and Olau Lu Daniel. Uh, thank you so much for putting all of this together. I miss all your busy schedule. Uh, the program, uh, all of it to come, is born out of the interest to, to the situation that we uh, we want to be a light to so everyone in their mid to uh, in the early to mid career uh, um, in period. There are pitfalls that any one of us are to get into while up the ladder in our career. There's no point, like I always say. Uh, I, at, um, uh, we can always um, share from my experience. Others can learn. Others can, you know, we can be a beacon of hope to everyone around every other sphere of influence. So I would like that um, we kick off the session and let's we can keep support so that we can understand the dynamics of people in the room. Uh, but uh, we can't uh, we depend so much on the, the natural connection on this side. Uh, I, I will try and see what can be done, but, this, but um, what, which we uh, mean, or we have to quickly make a switch at the moment. Um, it's Oluwali Dada would have to take over from Atoye Bioye Lirid. So Oluwali Dada, please can you um, go ahead and while I see and try uh, to see what I can move around here, especially as it relates to uh, the network connection. So thank you everybody and I hope that you would, um, I'm sure you will have a great time. So enjoy. Thank you very much, um, Esther. Um, it's my great privilege um, and honor to read a very, very brief and abridged version of the profile of our guest speaker. Um, we've tried to compress 40 years experience into three or four paragraphs, uh, but we we'll see what we can do uh, because of the brevity of, of them. So um, the profile of our guest, Mrs. Iko Uko. Iko Uko, a quintessential professional and multidimensional marketing advisor and expert, is a distinguished member of Nigerian Institute of Marketing of Nigeria and a highly respected veteran within the West African marketing communication space. She has served as the first vice president of the Advertising Association of Nigeria and other committees in the advertising and communication subsector in the Advertising Practitioners Council of Nigeria. Having managed many global brands for Nestle Nigeria, she has strong visibility in adapting global strategies to local applications, delivering necessary market growth. It was people and our customer centricity and this achievable drive to understand them more and more. If extensive business strategy, marketing strategy, and implementation, result focus, and strong people leadership skills with several years experience in marketing and general management in Nestle Nigeria. If as the only successful managers, as you have already heard one or two people mention, in the field of marketing in Nigeria. Ikoruko is currently the CEO of Entered Marketing, a marketing consultancy company. Experience, practical expertise in helping brands and businesses drive sustainable growth within the African context. Iko is also the founder of OneQFoodPlanter.com, a Nigerian food blog that has made notable impact in the Nigerian food space. She has served and still serve on the board of several companies in Nigeria. She was non-executive director, or she is, she is non-executive director 
Leshigo Microfinance Bank Limited, Lagos, Nigeria, from February 2020 till date. She is a chairperson and advisory board, Eco Innovation Center, Lagos, Nigeria. She is also a non executive director, Saro Life Care, Lagos, Nigeria. And she was executive director, board of Nestle Nigeria, April 2010 to 2015. May I once again, with due respect, welcome on board Mrs. Iko Uko as she leads us in this program. Over to you, ma. Thank you very much, Wally. Um, and thank you for uh, the kind words. Um, you know, sometimes I'm asking myself, are they talking about me or who? <laughs> you know? But thank you so much. Um, we have time is of essence today. You know, now we are going to cramp up um, 34.5 years of Nestle into a few minutes, but let's see. Uh, for me, it's about, um, you know, providing practical experiences. Uh, we're not talking textbooks here, you know, it's about what I experienced. And trust me, you know, I don't think things have changed quite much, you know, since then. So I want to believe that uh, whatever is going to be shared here will be useful to uh, the young, growing, uh, you know, um, career people, or, or some people that are in their own enterprise, you know, this, this could be useful as well. So it's my pleasure to be here and um, to share my experiences. Um, a little bit about me, which might not have been read, is that I'm a nutritionist dietitian, you know, uh, that's what I read in school, but found my way into marketing. Um, and so I said Nestle was fortunate because, you know, they had a good marriage of uh, somebody who had nutrition background, uh, Nestle being a food company, and then also them taking me through the rudiments of marketing. So at the end of the day, I don't know who benefited more, whether it's Nestle or me, but, you know, uh, there's so much I took away from that company, trust me. So um, I think um, I'll just wait for Wale to take us through each of the questions he asked. He has, and then in between, I can share nuggets. You know, they might not necessarily be answering those specific questions. So, as we go ahead, I'm sure I'll be dropping, you know, some tips here and there. Just, um, you know, join us on this journey, and I'm sure it will be an exciting one. Thank so, you Alish very, thank you very much. Um, one of the questions that we have here, um, someone said the corporate environment is always linked with an interplay of a lot of factors when it comes to promotions, transfers, strategic appointment, and move. In no particular order, what three things would you say have been mainly responsible for the sterling career that you had spanning over three decades? Um. You know, I, 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 it's, it's about defining what you want. Um, you are where you are. Why? Is it just to earn a salary? <laughs> you know, I, I tell younger people today, I think you have more options than I did. And so from the get-go, you should define what do I want from this organization? Because trust me, the, the journey of the career is a long one. And most likely, you don't want to be in that organization throughout your working career. In my case, I was there. And maybe I'll share with you why I stayed so long at Nestle. But the point is, first of all, I defined what I wanted out of Nestle. And I kept my eyes, my ears open to opportunities that would help me drive those things I had defined for myself. And of course, one of them was, I was going to get to be the MD of Nestle Nigeria. That was, that was, that was my, you know, my, that was what I wanted. And so every move was driving towards that. Was I the MD of Nestle Nigeria? No, finally, but there were some other reasons for that. But I got to the peak, which was the board of Nestle Nigeria. And that was for me, an achievement in the sense that, first of all, I was the first female to have sat on the board of Nestle Nigeria after the company had been in Nigeria for over 40 years. So, I mean, that, that for me is, you know, an achievement. And besides that, the journey through it, which I'll share uh, shortly. So, what do you want? Number one, drive to get it. Seek out opportunities to get it. Number two, 
I loved what I did. You know, there's no point, you know, when I wake up in the morning, because trust me, uh, getting up to go to work used to be 6 or 5 a.m. Um, I'm an early bird, you know. Um, it just happened that my school days, that was it. So I carried it on to my working life. So I was one of the first people that to resume at work, you know, in Nestle every day. But I loved what I did. If I did not love what I did, honestly, the sacrifice of um, security in Lagos and all of that wouldn't have been worth my while. So I loved what I did. And then also, I worked for an organization that provided me with the opportunity for growth. Um, this was a company that was actually fairly gender neutral. If you could do it, you would be given the opportunity to do it. And I know that there are many many, uh, you know, because I know somebody asked, uh, you know, about the life, the working career of females and all of that. Nestle was that company or is that company where I had the opportunity, you know, to, you know, excel because I was given the opportunity. Okay, thank you very much. Um, one other question here. Is so from your experience, what traits would you say have characterized those who have risen through the ladder of the organization to the zenith of their career? Um, you will be in a very good position. Um, having seen all manner of people, some people joined with you and um, dropped by the wayside, and then you got to the top and you saw some people also climb that ladder. What were those traits? What, for people who are in their mid-level, um, how do you advise Okay, you know, let me, I'm going to share a story with you and um, there's, there's a pink sheet of paper I have here and I've kept it, um, I think this thing was written in 1990, I don't know how come I kept it till now, <laughs> but I kept it. And this for me is a reminder of something that happened and um, changed the trajectory of my career. Like I said, I joined Nestle as a medical rep or medical delegates as we were called then. And I was in that infant nutrition department for about seven, eight years. Well, I didn't, I was not particularly doing the same thing. I came in as a med rep and I was there for like 18 months. And I was moved off from the field, you know, to help develop um, materials for the field staff, you know. So I was nutrition advisor, developing uh, posters, uh, flyers, handbills, and stuff like that, which they in turn used to detail, you know, doctors. Now, the opportunity came for me in 1990. I joined Nestle in 1981. Now, whilst I was in the infant nutrition department, which was like a specialized um, department, so to speak, not quite marketing, I had the opportunity to sit at meetings where marketing people would discuss. And this was where I personally developed, you know, my interest in marketing. I knew that I was not going to even function well as a dietitian in a hospital, which was why I came into a company like Nestle. And so, like I said, you know, the, in the previous question where you asked, I said, you know, knowing what you want and therefore striving for opportunities when they come. So in terms of growth, it is that it's in my hands. Now, the opportunity came for me, you know, the, the then marketing manager said he needed people to propose, um, you know, how the company was going to navigate, you know, and remain successful in the 90s, because already in the late 80s, we were faced with the kind of situation we are faced today in Nigeria. Now, if you just indulge me, let me just read you know, a few lines from this, you know, which, you know, when you hear it, you say, my goodness, I thought, um, you know, you know, honestly, you think, is there anything new under the sun? So just hear me out, you know, I won't take so much of your time here. 1990 outlook and expectations. By the way, this is, this was done in typewriter. So that's why it's a pink copy. In line with the above, it is, incontrovertibly true that our company experienced a lot of operating difficulties in 1989 due largely to the harsh economic conditions in the country. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> that was in 
this could very well mean that realization of set goals for the year was not totally a success. The economic environment has not really changed for the better, and this points to the fact that one, that the same difficulties likely, is likely to prevail in 1990, that prices will continue to increase without improving profitability, number three, that a loss of market share in the infant, cereal, and bouillon uh, segment is imminent, with competition becoming more intense. That the current budget does not appear to provide significant reliefs designed to ameliorate difficulties in securing foreign exchange allocation for purpose of bringing in production input with foreign content. This was me, a medical delegate, writing in 1990. Now, why I'm, why I'm reading this out to you, first, I wasn't a marketing expert, remember? I was only a medical delegate. But because I wanted to get into marketing, I had to use marketing language. I had to talk like a marketing person. I had to write these four or five pages like a marketing person. You know, I went on to propose what needs to be done in the different segments, in Milo, in Golden Morning, in Maggie, and all that. You know, honestly, when I look at some of the things I wrote in 1990, I even have goosebumps myself because I said, what has changed? But that was the break for me to move from medical delegate into marketing proper. Marketing held an attraction for me. I liked the, um, the creative side of marketing. And so this was how I found my way into marketing. Now, I was in marketing. You know, I talked about ask what you want. I had been in marketing for some time. I was the group brand manager and all of that. Um, by this time, I was in my early 50s. My boss then, the commercial manager, a South African, you know, I, I was sitting at my prison and he says, um, because so what's the next thing for you? I said, you know what, Richard, um, I want to be, I want to sit where you're sitting. I mean, the guy almost fell off his chair. He said, what, maybe I might not have attempted that if this was a Nigerian, but okay. Um, I, th I think I, I still would have anyway. So Richard says, but you could have not left. I say, yes, I, I know, Richard, you've not left, but you would leave. And as soon as you leave, I'm going to sit on that seat. And he says, if that doesn't happen, I say, no problem. Nestle has been good to me. I would find my expression elsewhere. I think I've, um, you know, there's not much for me to give uh, you know, at this point, so I I'll move on. Of course, 20 minutes later, the MD of the company was in my office. You quite hear you're leaving. I said, no, JLC, because we used to call him JLC. I said, not, not quite. But if Nestle is not offering me what I want, then I leave. And no hard feelings, you know. Guys, three months later, or was it, yeah, about three, six months later, I was made um, the category business manager. Uh, sorry, I was made the marketing manager of Nestle Nigeria. The first female to be the marketing manager of Nestle Nigeria, by the way. Another point came. I had been there, you know, you know, done marketing manager. We went from marketing management to category business management and all of that. And it was time to, it looked as if they couldn't find something else for this lady because the company now went, you know, we now had regions. You know the way it is, you know, you're, if you're so long in a company, is that that you you know, they'll give you a nice package to separate you and you go off and do what you want to do. But I don't know why they kept me. Anyway, we then have a new regional head. Sorry, guys, I need to tell this story because I know it's going to help a lot of us. It's getting we interesting. Have new, we have a new regional head. He's visit, visiting Nigeria for the first time uh, from Accra to Nigeria. I don't know what he was told about me, but I guess somebody must have said, no, we can't keep her anymore and all of that. You know, because when you talk about selling career, Sometimes it would go like that. Anyway, the guy insists that I drive with him because he was visiting Agbara factory. I drive with him from, Agba from Sheraton Hotel in Lagos to Agbara factory. Never met him before. This is the new regional head. I mean, I said, my goodness. But okay, I put my cap back on opportunity here. And I said, I have to sell myself to this guy. I, I, I have two hours or so in this traffic with him. 
So what, what should I do? Okay, I sell myself and that's it. I mean, whatever he wants to do with it, he does with it. And boy, did I sell myself. Uh, so because by the time we got to Agbara, my then MD asked him, so how was the trip? He said, I couldn't have had another companion on this trip. And I knew I had nailed it at that point. And so when my um, new boss then, you know, I sat at the appraisal with him, he says, equal, you know, I mean, you've been everything, gone to the peak of marketing and that, that, that. So what's the next step? I said, Martin, I want to sit on the board of Nestle Nigeria. Guys, mark my words, in two, you know, big moves, I have asked for it. I have opened my mouth to ask for it. The most that the company could have said is, sorry, we don't have opportunity there. In that position but guess what i was i was moved i was on the board before i left so you know when you're talking about growth in an organization like i said you look for the opportunities ask for it but again prepare yourself prepare yourself for those roles uh, it does not just happen um when i joined the board of nestle nigeria the then chairman uh, Chief Oshunke, uh, I mean, really, a corporate guru. You know what he told me? He said, Yuko, you know what? We didn't bring you to on board just because we want to count. We want to be sure that there's a woman on the board. But we're bringing you on because you, you, we know you're going to add value. And that, that for me says a lot. Wale, over to you. Oh, um, the, the story you have said, you will still say more because <laughs> that letter that you wrote, what prompted that letter and who did you write it to and what were the out this i mean these are like three questions in one mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. prompted that letter and because that letter even looks like what is happening in nigeria today what next problem yeah. um yeah and um, budget not sufficient and exactly mm -hmm. the same thing now what prompted that letter who did you write it to and what was the outcome of that letter over to you Mark. Yes, um, like I said, the then marketing manager, um, Chris Obeche, he's actually a lecturer at uh, Pan African uh, University now. Chris Obeche asked us, because he was at, at, at its, uh, his wit's end, most marketing heads of marketing then had tried everything, they didn't know what to do. So they told, you know, we were told then in Nestle, whether you were in core marketing or not, can you send in? a proposal on what are your thoughts? How do you think this company can survive in the 90s? Like I said, I wasn't in marketing, but because this was thrown out to everybody, and I know that there were medical reps, my colleagues in the infant nutrition department, that did not respond to that letter. But I responded to that letter, and I went beyond. And after the letter was how I moved into marketing proper. I moved into culinary mm. after that. And that was the, you know, the beginning of my journey in marketing. But like I said, the point was, there was an opportunity, I saw it, and I took it. Will it be right to say that letter was a turning in your career? Oh, yes. I mean, I, I, absolutely. But also, also, even, even before then, um, as a medical delegate, um, I think we are over 30 something medical delegates. I came in as, you know, a fresh graduate. I met, you know, in the team, people that were nurses, they had been matrons and all of that. And I said, my goodness, how am I going to navigate this space, you know, with these older people? You know what I did? Mm -hmm. I identified that, um, you know, Nestle had this newsletter. And I said, how, how do I stand out in this company? Over a thousand people working in this organization. So first step, I met the editor of that magazine and I decided I was going to keep a column, a column on nutrition in the Nestle newsletter. That was mm -hmm. my first, I mean, did I even know I was doing personal branding then? But that was me doing my personal branding within the organization. So you know, even before this letter, I had already started gaining some visibility within the organization on the platform of that um, Nestle newsletter. Now, great. Uh, I've received questions um, on one of the things you said. 
and the questions look similar, that is it a possibility for a mid-level career person to say the same thing that you said that time about I want your seat and get away with it in this day <laughs> and time? You know, um, look, depending on who is there, you know, th there's something called native intelligence. For a South African, I can say that. For a Nigerian, I'll find a different way of saying the same thing. Mm. So it's, it's, it's about, yeah, it, you say it anyway, mm. but say it. Mm. it. Like I said, I mean, what's, what can possibly go wrong? In any case, for me, at, at that point in my career, I was actually ready to move on. I mean, because by this time, um, of course, you know, I had started sending out my... Um, attending interviews, and by the way, you know, I don't know if your bosses are here, I would advise you always go and test your value outside, no matter what you do, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I, I had a lot of dinner with um, MDs of organizations and all of that, I needed to test my value, I needed to know was, would I be offered this job and all of that, just so that I don't feel like, you know, I'm sitting in Nestle, and if I leave, gosh, I'm there's nothing for me. So from time to time, I reached out, wrote those applications, got invited for interviews, had dinner with um, MDs and all of that, and then checked the companies out. And I saw that, yeah, you know, maybe the, the, the uh, political environment there were a little bit too lethal for me. So, you know, I continued, came back and stayed in Nestle. So yeah, it's about how you say it. Great, thank you. Now, another question. Um, um, Wally, just a moment. Um, good. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Okay, perfect. If, if we can uh, hear so you. The, the chat room is a, is a lot busy at the moment, and I thought that um, I would like Mama to hear this, some of the things that our people are saying. <laughs> um, so we have uh, Rikowe Toka saying, profound, wow. Um, Moronke saying interesting story. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> okay, he first seems to have gone off. Me? Okay. Okay. She's um, back. So, okay, I'm go back. On, go now. On, okay, so I'm just trying to let us see what's going on in the chat room Thank and um, a few thoughts that uh, the people are putting up. Um, so interesting story, Ma, that's from Morum Kekelechi Elechi. So this is um, an interesting one. I love the gradual build up. Um, Obala says, I want to sit where you're sitting. Mm. <laughs> now wondering if a mid-level professional can say this to whoever. <laughs> like to their bosses at times as this. And mm -hmm. Ella says the way she makes the demand daring. Uh, Ruka Wetoka um, typed here, you must, have, you must have the achievement and report card to ask for that. Mm -hmm. So you're going mm -hmm. to share that with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's still 100% possible for us to do so. So Ruka Wetoka, thanks for boosting our confidence. Huh? <laughs> so Dick of Day today says, wow. And um, Moroke said, okay, well, uh, alluding to what uh, Wale already said, mm -hmm. Rukawe Tota still says, I really admire your boldness, mm -hmm. ma'am. I am inspired. Mm -hmm. And uh, Obala says, nice time to be here with a giant. And um, well, that was for me. I said, this is inspiring to, to say the least, super inspiring. And there's something around when preparation meets opportunity, mm -hmm. flowing, mm -hmm. and that you would share with us. You now, what are the because I'm not I want to hear that's on my own side now. The what sort of preparation apart from uh, you know the disability drive, mm -hmm. as I would put it, I would want to think that you also you know some self development, mm -hmm. or were you sent on trainings? Were you doing some job shadowing? Were you what was did you have a coach? And what was the you know what was the attachment to the coach? What, did you go to the coach? Were you assigned? Do you have mentors outside of work? Who were those that you were looking up to? I hope these are not too much, but I tell you <laughs> these are the things going on and the minds of 
most of us on this call. Um, so I see it is quite mentally stimulating to learn from your boldness. That I think um, a lot of us want to get, uh, uh, you know, some bit of today, the boldness. Uh, what were you thinking? <laughs> so um, standing up with head up high, then uh, they, they established to say, seek out opportunity to get what you want. Hmm. At your age, Bui, you will have to explain that. Maybe somewhere when we all have opportunity to speak again. All right. The story around the newsletter is profound and quite strategic. Another one there, native intelligence. Hmm. <laughs> that one I already noted. They always test your value. That, I think I'm underlining it. And I'm sure a number of people would want to ask... <laughs> Some question as it relates to that. So I would like to Ale, just take on the conversation from here. At least you have a feel of um, yeah. how the people in the room are, mm -hmm. uh, you know, taking in all that you are throwing at us. <laughs> Thank you so much, ma'am. We are soaking it all yeah. in. Okay. Thank you. Um, Wale, over to you, uh, please. Now, I am going to take your question. And that question is that, how were you prepared? just like um it was just it was said now what were the preparations that you took was it was reading books was it reading journals was it the master's program what were the actual preparations that you made and in addition to the ones that you made what advice will you give in this age and time are there days between your time and this time uh <laughs> looks like three questions in one over to you Mark. well i can only say Upskill, upskill, and upskill. I like telling stories, so let me tell you, a, 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 you know, a short story. Um, you know, at some point, by the time I joined marketing, this was when um, we all started using the computer because computer is second nature today. But this was when we started using the computer. But it happened that, as at the time, um, I think it was Excel that was being, there was some course on Excel and uh, PowerPoint and all of that. And I just happened not to have been at work. I think I, I, you know, I, I was a bit under the weather at that time. And so by the time I came back you know, to work, the rest of my colleagues were talking mouse and this and that. And I, I, I didn't even know what they were talking about. Of course, this, is, this wasn't the time where each person had laptops to themselves. So it was just the secretaries. We had secretaries then, the secretaries that, you know, had computers. You know what I did? I said, look, <laughs> I've got to learn this. And I didn't even have a laptop at home anyway. So I got one of the secretaries. I would watch when he goes for lunch. I allowed him. I had spoken to him earlier. I said, please, you were this program, you know, I would miss my lunch, but kindly help me here. So after his lunch, I'll sit with him for 30 minutes and he will take me through. And so I did this for two weeks and I was able to catch up with the rest of my colleagues. You know what, as at that, the, 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 then, you know, the marketing manager then, you know, uh, the person I was reporting to, had to make a lot of presentations. And what did I do? I offered to prepare his presentations for him, just so that I got myself acquainted with presentation. By the way, this presentation I'm talking about wasn't exactly PowerPoint. You know, we did, we used to do those things on um, uh, transparent films, place it on the projector and then it's projected. But you know, I helped him each time he needed to make these presentations. I told you I work for an organization that I thought and I believe till today, provided all the resources that anybody needed to succeed. There were marketing journals, marketing magazines in-house. And trust me, what I did was I would take some of those old magazines and go home, read, look at you know, the different situations in other markets. I mean, maybe this is the beauty of working for a multinational. And so one learns even before going to any marketing school. Like I said, I never read marketing in school, but I made sure that I devoured those marketing magazines within the organization. And of course, as I sat as you know, a younger 
brand specialist, I was careful to listen to the you know, more experienced brand managers, what was the language, what were they talking about? You know, because like I said, before I even migrated into marketing, I had to start speaking the language of that you know, uh, department. I could not go there speaking the language of infant nutrition. And so, you know, just there listening, taking in, soaking in, you know, helped me. So it, it was about self-development at the end of the day. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to say something that Mr. Emmanuel Oluayeni, um, I think, uh, is a colleague of yours. And the, yes. <laughs> the people were learning of boldness, uh, but he tried to make a caution. He said, boldness admired, but what is more important was your preparation for the next position. Mm -hmm. Asking with boldness without mm -hmm. apparent preparation mm -hmm. and readiness mm -hmm. will lead to a big no reply and ultimate <laughs> frustration. And now went on That's to say it. to you, brilliant and visionary colleague, I am <laughs> proud of her. Um, I'm also thank proud you. of you, ma. Thank you. Uh, I call him Ayenko. Ayenko, thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh. You like to say something, <laughs> That's really, we are really proud of you. You like to say something, Matt? No, go ahead with your next question. Okay. Now, my next question is, uh, over the years, you must have seen certain things people did that placed a limit on their career, that made them not to go beyond certain levels. Uh, you've showed us certain things that were responsible for rising very far and fast. But what were those other things that were responsible for the limitations? In other words, you could call them career limiting moves, uh, career limiting actions. So, what were those things you could say uh, limited the career of some people and that you see today that are also limiting the career of many others? Over to you, Mark. Um, you know, I would go back to some marketing terms and I would say you have to continue to innovate and renovate yourself, <laughs> even as a personal brand. Um, of course, you know, organizations evolve. And I know that by the time we moved then, you know, from using typewriters to computers, some people could not cope with computers. And I know they fell by the wayside. Um, you are in marketing, we are in the digital space, and you have not made any effort to move in that direction. Of course, you're going to be left behind. You know, let, let me share, you know, a little experience again. I mean, yes, a bit of a story. And, you know, when you talk about staying power in an organization, is this thing about constantly renovating yourself? You know, I have a food blog today, and uh, sometimes when, when people ask me, how did you come about food blog? You know, let me, I mean, the, the whole story behind food blog was, I wanted to dip my hands into the rough end of social media. Because, of course, you know, Nestle then would not sit you down and teach you anything about social media. And so I decided, social media, I have to learn it myself. And so I started a food blog. But you know what? I took on my children. I took on many young people to teach me. And so if you're not ready to come down, to understand, to learn, then you become totally irrelevant. You know, so it's no wonder, I don't think it's rocket science, you know, when people, uh, you know, can no longer grow in an organization. But there's also something else. Um, if I take marketing specifically, I will tell people because of what I see today, after a certain age, particularly in multinationals, after a certain age, if you see that movement is not going to be upward, then look for a horizontal movement. But again, you have to have prepared yourself for that horizontal movement. Um, in today's world of um, regionalization, you might just find out that you, be, you are a brand manager maybe for 10 years. But trust me, if you know that you are good in HR, for instance, you can easily pivot, move out of marketing, talk to your HR partner 
and let them know where you want to go. But of course, you would have prepared yourself for, for that. You want to get into supply chain, you have prepared for that. You present yourself for that opportunity. So it's, um, it's, it's either you grow, you learn, you innovate and renovate yourself, or you are out. I mean, if you had a company, I guess you'll do the same. You know, if, if, if somebody is not adding value at some point, you know, the person is out. And trust me, it's, it's, more, it's more today than it was in my time. Oh, great, great, innovate and renovate. Someone is asking again, what drives you? Um, perhaps you also find a story to back that up. Uh, <laughs> What drives me, you know, um, excellence, one. Two, um, I, I believe I was put on this earth for a purpose. <laughs> and therefore, you know, the, the point is I want to ask, I want to tell myself that when I meet my creator, what would I tell him I have done with the time he gave me? And so for me, that's, that's my accountability for doing what I do. Yes, of course, um, as a woman, I want to, in climbing the ladder, hold other women. Hold other women and help them climb because I know the life of a woman is, is, a, you know, is different from that of a man. So, you know, for me, the motivation is to en encourage younger women, but above everything, um, just so that when I meet my maker, I know what to tell <laughs> Oh, great. Um, there's a question on work-life balance. Yeah. For a man, sometimes we may think you can continue to explain to your wife. But as a woman, how were you able to cope? <laughs> the first thing I will say is that is work-life balance a possibility? And number two, if it is a possibility, how did you achieve it? And number three, if it is not, what do we do as individuals? Um, I always describe that work-life balance with a triangle. I am on one point, my family is on one point, career is on the other, you know, point of the, of the triangle. And hardly would you find that triangle having two equal sides all the time. And that's, that's the reality of, of work and life. Uh, sometimes it tilts towards family, sometimes it tilts towards career. But again, you have to decide what you want. You know, when I told you that um, my dream was to be the MD of Nestle in Nigeria, was I? No, I wasn't. But it had to do with that triangle. I knew that you know that there, were, there was a time I was offered you know to go to Cote d'Ivoire and um, work for some time. I was even offered that did I want to go to was it um, Gambia, you know, to head the business. And I looked at as as at this time my children were in Canada, my husband in Lagos. It, it was my personal decision not to take that offer because that was going to prepare me, you know, from. Gambia, I guess I would have been maybe moved to uh, Cameroon and all that, preparing me to come to Nigeria. But I didn't want to. It was my personal decision. Um, is it a bad decision? No, that, that's, that's my decision, you know. You know, <laughs> Lagos, and not that I don't trust my husband, though, but you know, <laughs> Lagos is tough. You know what I mean? So anyway, mm -hmm. now... <laughs> the, other, the other side of that question, the other side of that question is, you know, I mean, for a man, you can get up and move. For a woman, is it the same? No. Um, I say you should, I, for the women, I say adopt what is called SSCM. SSCM is uh, Sofri Sofri Catch Monkey. Uh, what this means is that... We, 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 need, we need to hear that more. We did not get that. I said, you know, for the women, I would say there's something called uh, an acronym I use, and that is SSCM. Okay. And that SSCM is, called, is in pigeon, suffering, suffering, catch monkey. Now, what does this mean? 
look, you know, I tell people, you've been told at work, oh, you're going to Dubai. You know, we're posting you to Dubai. You know, the, the normal reaction of, a, of the lady, she will go to the female toilet. She is excited. She's jumping. But you know what? Have you told Miss Tevis? You haven't. Who is going to look after the kids? You haven't figured it out. You know, I, I had a young colleague. She had just been um, offered posting outside Nigeria and all of that, excited. And so I said, are you going with the kids or are, are the kids staying back? She said, ah, of course, I'm carrying the children. I said, oh, really? Your husband has agreed to that? Ah, no, I haven't discussed with him. I said, ah, okay. You know, but for me, if you know that in your career, that move is likely to happen, my goodness, one year before then, you start to hint the man. You, had, you, you, you know, you, you, you start to feign this thing about you not even liking the job. If you know that two of you are responsible for paying the children's school fees, mm. you will tell him that, ah, hmm, this works, self. I'm writing my, you know, I'm resigning. The man will be begging you, resign to go where? You say, well, yeah, I can't come and kill myself with this work. And that, you know, they've already started talking about Dubai. Meanwhile, Dubai has been, is a done deal, you know. But you prepare his mind. You say, I'm not even interested in going to this Dubai. I'll just put in my application and look for another job. The man will say, ah, is it Dubai? Ah, don't worry about that now. I'll look after the children. We can go back and forth and all of that. You have bought, you have his buy-in. But you can't wake up one day, you've been told to go to Dubai, and you just go walk in and say, ah, okay, I'm going to Dubai. Okay, I'm going with the children. No, oh, the company will pay the school fees of the children and all of that. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's recipe for disaster in your, your personal life. That's, that's my mm. this, this, this is awesome. Um, again, I'd like to say, Mr. Oluayeni is speaking here. He said, <laughs> our guest speaker, before that, he said, versatility and polyvalency is also very important to moving up the career ladder. Mm -hmm. Our guest speaker today made herself versatile. Mm -hmm. So he's also speaking more about how proud of you he is. Uh, one of your proteges, I suppose, he said this very <laughs> Musa Blama, he said this very giant was and is still an inspiration to all of us that started a career yeah. as medical rep. That's true. Okay. That's true. You are as an angel. Seven That's years true. after you inspired me to take that horizontal move, I remain <laughs> ever grateful. Mm, I moved up again two years ago. Uh, these are just trying to illustrate uh, what you are telling us uh, in practical terms. Thank you. My Thank next you. question. Mm -hmm. The workplace, many believe, is a place where dog eats dog. <laughs> that might sound harsh. But in other terms, some will call it office politics. Mm -hmm. How were you able to navigate through and get to the top? And what would be your advice for those who are coming up? Well, let, let me just say that um, I, I stayed clear of office politics, not because it does not exist. But again, maybe I'm not the right person to talk because I only worked in one organization. Um, was there politics? Yes, absolutely there was, you know, but I stayed clear, clear of it. Did it have implications for me? Somewhat, yes. I mean, I know, um, you know one or two things happened, but um, they were not really deal breakers for me. Um, it's, it's best to stay clear of um, office politics. However, I think in today's... Um, world, you know, people are taught to seek out sponsors, people they call sponsors. What is a sponsor? Um, if you're a middle level manager, for instance, you, you are in marketing. I think it makes sense to have a relationship with the head of supply chain, for example, the head of sales, for example. You can develop a relationship where you, you know, you act like you go to them, you know, to seek for advice and stuff like that and stuff like that. What are you doing there? 
you try to sell, you know, you're, you're trying to position yourself such that these people see you beyond what your boss sees about you. Because what happens is when it's time to move up, when it's time to be promoted, and again, like I said, I'm talking in the context of a multinational where, you know, there is a structure in terms of human resource and how people are moved up and all of that. So you'll find that even if you have an issue with your boss and your name is being proposed for promotion, you have a relationship with the head of sales, the head of supply chain has good impression about you. You know, by the time your boss is talking, that person is saying, no, no, but I have, I, you know, I don't think um, Wale is like that, you know. I, you know, I was chatting with Wale the other day in the, in the canteen, and this is what he said, this is what he said. You know, so you open yourself for others to see you beyond what your immediate boss sees you. But like I said, if you have the liver for politics, Go ahead, but I always find out that is not is not is not the route to go. Do your job, enjoy it, deliver results. Yes, from time to time you might deliver that result, and you're not moved up. There are other considerations a company might just have for not moving you up. But uh, politics is not the kind of thing I will put my head in. I, I mean, for me, I think it's, it's, it's a waste of time. But Having sponsors in the system, I think, is a good is a good um, a move. Thank you very much. Someone is asking, uh, but I will also implore our people to put in their questions um, uh, for the moment. Someone said we are there challenging moment in Nestle that wanted to throw in the towel and walk away. What were those challenges? And um, can you back up with the story again? <laughs> well, um, yeah, I, you know, there's always a story I tell you. Um, there were challenging moments. I mean, immediately Nestle went, you know, had the regional structure in place. Remember I said I was a marketing manager and Mr. Oluayeni then was a national sales manager. Now, marketing was now restructured such that we had bosses sitting in Ghana. So you had to report to somebody in Ghana. So the whole system of a marketing manager in Nigeria was collapsed. And we all had to revert to being category business managers and all of that. Seemed like a demotion of some sort and what and what and what. Anyway, a fast forward, um, finally a department was, was created and that was marketing services department. It never had existed in Nestle, but here was I taking on a new role. I know that as that um, maybe a month or two ago that I still spoke to somebody, I hear that the role marketing services department is still there in Nestle. But I developed that, de that department from scratch. What it stood for, what it should do, what it shouldn't do, you know, so, um, yes, that moment, like I said, the transition from marketing residing in country into going into a region was a challenging moment. But again, I took it in my stride and made the best of it at the end of the day. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question here. There are people who are stuck in their career at the moment. Um, they've not been promoted in years. What do you think can be done? Can, my que can my I be question, heard? okay. Can you hear me, ma? Yes, I can hear you. I mean, I would, the question I'll ask that person is what is, what is that person still doing there? What are you still doing there? Mm. You know, because mm. the point is you will be, a, you know, I told you, I stayed that long in Nestle because mm. I loved what I did. Mm. If I'm going out every day and I'm, you know, a bitter person, a sad, why have you not looked for another job? <laughs> That's the question I want to ask. Why have you not looked for another job? That's one. Two, I think something I, if I had the opportunity and, you know, um, what I could have told my younger self, is that I would have taken on an interest 
um, earlier on in my career, interest outside of the job, I find that it helps. You know, trust me, the last few years before my retirement, when I started the food blog, I was a different person. I mean, when I left the office and I went home, there was something waiting for me to do. Yes, it wasn't, I mean, I wasn't doing it for money at the time, but it was something of interest. I learned photography. I learned, you know, the space mm. of social media. And, you know, mm. look, for me, if... If I, if, I, if, I, if I started Instagram at 60-something, almost 50-something, and today I'm sitting with over 100,000 followers on Instagram, organic, mm. organically grown, then anybody can do it. So the, the question is, yes, the job might not be delivering, but again, I would question why you're still there. Two, when you have some other things feeding into your emotions, um, even when you have a lull in your career, because trust me, all of us do. Uh, we, we don't, we were not all, I wasn't promoted every four years like I would have wanted to. But within that time, you know, you make the best of that season. But mm. something else, check that man in the mirror. What is this, you know, the key success profile of the next level? Are you living it? Um, my, my MD then, you know, would say he was somebody that would walk around, you know, the, the, the office and sometimes he walks around and, um, some people's ringtone. And I'm, I mean, with due respect to people's type of music, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not a big deal, but you know, if you like was you, I'm the barista and your phone rings in the boardroom and that's the ringtone in the boardroom. It doesn't sound, <laughs> there's a way it sounds. So the question is, how are you preparing yourself? How are you acting the part of the next level? Do you know what it means to be the um, uh, marketing manager? What is the role of the marketing manager? Are you already living the role of the marketing manager as a brand manager? And that's, that's the way that the company will see that you're ready for it you know, and um, you'll be given the opportunity. But if, if the system really, truly does not uh, recognize your efforts, then please uh, find um, your option. This is no answer for someone who has been denied promotion over and over. Uh, you hear this mantra, I was denied, I was qualified, but I was not considered. Answer for that. The person says he's qualified, but you know, like I said, that person, have you checked it? So it's beyond, it's beyond just I work hard. It's beyond I work hard. You know, a bit about emotional intelligence. You know, when we put you in the position of a marketing manager, can you act the part? Because the, the marketing manager in your organization, you're going to meet the marketing manager of Friesland, Campina, if you have a marketing manager, are you at that level? You know, it's, it's, there's, there's no point having a pity party. Like I said, you know, you don't own the organization. If the organization says you're not fit, then, you know, you leave. There's no point, you know, staying. Honestly, for me, um, I think you'll be, you know, the worst for it. You'll, you'll not be a happy person. And what's, what's the point? Quite deep. Only one lay. Okay, maybe while um, he's still trying to join back, I would want to think that um, some connection challenges. Let's just go through the chat room quickly. Um, so I'm not sure if he has read this question. Um, okay, I think that's the question he just um, addressed. Mm -hmm. Well, one key question now on my mind is. Um, you know, I look at how forward thinking you, you were, ma'am. Uh, when people of your age group were not thinking social media, <laughs> even starting up something, building a brand, you know, telling a story, because you've been quite consistent, you know, with your story, up to the extent that you've also made a name for yourself. In the food, anything food in Nigeria, you are usually in the top two, top three. And you started while you were in your 50s. 
And um, the question now to me and to everyone also on this, um, on, on this uh, session <laughs> is what are the things we should start looking at in the future? What, what are the opportunities that mm -hmm. might uh, come up in the future that maybe we are not putting our eyes in? So what was your trigger then? Okay, you mentioned a bit about, um, you know, you, you shared a bit around how you went on social media, but the personal brand then, what was it? I mean, you, you didn't just go on social media and start doing a random post. And mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, I mean, so there's just still, uh, how were you able to you know, build that, know what would resonate with the kind of audience that you want you and build that, you know, big brand for yourself. So that's the, the thing on my mind. Maybe you want to tell us a bit of um, your story. Did you just wake up one day mm -hmm. and then you're like, this is what I want to do. Uh, but I know for sure that you didn't because I remember while I was at Nestle um, that you used to gather people around, you whip up something <laughs> and there's this work table that you have somewhere and you ask people to start tasting, to start tasting. <laughs> I have some pictures of you. So, okay. Um, please, please tell us a let, bit let, about that journey, Ma. I, I, I think this was um, preparatory to me retiring. Uh, maybe I can drop the hint here. Now, I can't overemphasize um, networking. I think it's even more critical today than it was even yesterday. Network, right network. But more importantly, I tell people, please network down. Network down. What does that mean? Um, if I just stayed with networking uh, horizontally, my colleagues, and of course, network up, the guys that I would have met, yeah, they're they still relevant, but not, there's, they have their relevance. But I'm talking about if you're, if you're thinking of living, um, your nine to five into maybe an enterprise, you might not retire at 60 like I did. I know that for the average retirement age, here will be 45. If I'm, if, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, that's about when people would leave. Um, because, you know, trust me, sometimes if by the time you're 50, the organization is even hurrying you up to get out of the place. Now, so your network has to be tight, but more importantly, network down. Because those are the people that will be relevant when you step out. Your colleague would be about your age as well and would not be at that level, you know, uh, where they can be of much, you know, help. I hope everybody here has a LinkedIn account. I hope every, and that LinkedIn account is updated and that LinkedIn account is active. Um, I started, you know, doing some writing on LinkedIn even before I left, right? Dropping articles, dropping articles, dropping articles. Now, the point is that by the time I said I was going to leave, I was clear. I said by the time I would leave, I wanted to still be intellectually active and economically active. But I did not want to be going to the reception of Nestle or any other organization because you know what would happen by the time you go to the reception I'm sitting there the, the you know the guys at the reception call through to the brand manager what I'll hear is I'm at a meeting because I know what would have happened behind you know closed doors ah mama you know I mean I, I, didn't, I didn't even want to get into that so me being relevant on LinkedIn meant that I will be found easily. Now, I can tell you that two of the board appointments have been because I'm on LinkedIn. I was found on LinkedIn and I continue to be visible and active in that space. Of course, my, my um, food blog, I took it to the next level, used my knowledge of marketing, understood you know, uh, the consumers and what the consumers wanted and gave it to them, you know. So, but for me, again, it's about reinventing, renovating yourself. I cannot continue to stay with the marketing. Marketing has moved. And if I'm not moving into the digital era, then, of course, obsolescence is, 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 just, is just knocking 
on the door. So for me, it has been the you know thing about just because I'm in that space, I continue to improve. I, I join so many, um, follow so many social uh, media platforms where they educate on social media. How do you get more followers? How do you do this? How do you do that? How do you do? So you know, it, learning is endless for me. Um, thank you very much, Ma. Um, one other question here. In this age and time, is there a relevance of being an alumnus of the top schools in the world, the Ivy League schools? Does it play a role uh, in getting to the top? Because even when you check the LinkedIn or profile of the MDs or organizations today, you see all those Ivy Leagues there. So does it mean for us to become MDs, uh, board members, we need to be an alumnus? No, not, not, not necessarily, but trust me, any such network is, is, is useful, um, particularly when you're not just a silent member, because also something about being there and being visible even in that um, association. So any such association works. I mean, all, all girls association, all boys association, they help, they help, absolutely. You know, but other professional, associations as well you know because that's where you get you know to have a voice um since living i know i know even i have stayed within the marketing community uh during the lockdown i joined a lot of um uh, webinars a lot of um instagram live it i was permanently on instagram live why I needed to understand what was going on. Um, if the marketing manager of La Casera was talking, I was there listening. Um, if the guy from the extreme advertising was talking, I was there listening. So I, if you ask me today, I know what is happening in the advertising industry. I know what is going on in marketing. You know, so it's, it's this thing about keeping, keeping oneself up to date, but it's a deliberate thing. You, you just have to take out time and do it. Join associations, I'm still, you know, in touch with um, people in Advan, people in AppCon, you know, I, I'm, I'm still relevant in those associations. And we, we, need, we need those uh, connects, you know, once, once you step out of that um, organization. Because, you know, the, the, the point is that the day you stop carrying Friesland Campina, you know, when you get to an, a reception, you don't have a Nestle card, you don't have a Friesland card. And they say, from where? You know, that question from where would jolt you. Because what you want to say is, I'm from my house. <laughs> but, you know, um, build your association just so that, you know, you have your networks when you move out of uh, your organization. Okay, um, we are gradually getting to the end of this. Uh, but um, two questions in one, uh, and um, I'd like you to answer them separately. The first one is, what would be your counsel for those who are looking for job opportunities? Um, I'm sure many of them are here. Uh, the country is tough, um, like the 1990 letter that you read, uh, we are in such situation again. So what would be your counsel um, for them? And then uh, after that, I'll hand over to uh, Ife, and then your party short to everyone. Um, on this platform, you have um, uh, head of sales, you have um, marketing, ed, you have head of supply chains, uh, you have MDs. So what would be your parting shot for everyone? Two questions in one, Mark. Over yeah. to you. Well, I, I think you're looking for a job. The, the question you need to ask yourself, I mean, I, I believe in data. I believe in having data. Where, where, where are companies who are companies looking for, you know, because sometimes the qualification you have might not be required. You know, I always make a joke, you know, when they say, oh, somebody has experience, I say, yes, experience. But you know, if, if, if I'm coming with experience of using a uh, daily reckoner, you know, daily reckoner was something salespeople used to use to calculate, you know, price. If I'm coming in 2020 with a daily reckoner, is an experience, but who needs that? Even, even um, you know, these uh, big 
if I'm coming with the experience of a typewriter, who needs that today? So first, what are the skill sets that you need for today's, you know, resource requirement? I've, I've, I've helped to interview people for organizations, and I'm still finding that in today's world, you know, a young person does not know how to use um, Excel, does not know how to use PowerPoint, basics, basics. And, you know, you, you, you're looking for a job, but more importantly, when you get that job, please deliver. But the point is that whilst looking for the job, check out what do people really want out there. Number two, what can you do when you don't have a job yet? Can you just start something? Can you just start something? I'm, I'm, I'm earning money, sometimes in dollars with the one Q food flat guys. I'm earning money. Mm. And I'm sitting at home doing it, by the way. Mm. I'm sitting at home doing it. So, you know, the, 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 the digital has provided us with such opportunities that I don't see that anybody has an excuse to sit and say, I'm looking for a job. Yes, look for a job. There are some of us that are entrepreneurs, we're born, and there's some of us that are career. We, we, we are career, you know, that's, that's the way it is. But if the career does not come in a, you know, in a bank, in a Nestle, in a freeze land, in where, there should be something that you can do. But I, I give myself as an example, I don't, I, yes, I have an office somewhere, but for the most part, what I do, I do from home. And if I'm earning money from it, because I said for me, it was going to be intellectual and economic, you know, activity for me in retirement and it's happening, but without me having to step out of my house. But, you know, there, there are so many things we can do. Uh, somebody will say, well, I don't have money. Look, when I started my food blog, I was doing it with my salary to prepare a recipe and shoot. I might just need 2000 Naira. My boss then was kind enough to give me a camera. Um, along the line, I, you know, submitted myself to the tutelage of my son to teach me photography. And trust me, guys, when you're done, I hope I'm going to have so many people following me today on one Q food platform on Instagram. I think I do the, one of the best pictures, food photography. And mm -hmm. this is me sitting at home and learning. So there are many things we can do, you know, um, whilst we wait you know, to get a job. Oh, thank you very much. Now, the next one, Ma, um, for everyone on this platform, uh, mid-level, entry-level, senior managers, head of departments who are here, uh, consultants, what would be your parting shot? It could also be, you can take those parting shots for each sector, <laughs> and um, perhaps, if possible, and you can back up with another story. <laughs> Look, for, if, you, if you're living, um, let me, yeah, a story, yeah. Let me do the story thing. If I'm living, which is what I did, you leave um, an organized setup. Let me take like a Friesland, like a Nestle. And you want to get into the real world called Nigeria. There has to be an immersion for you somehow. You have to immerse yourself, you know, which is what I did. When I left, I went to, you know, Firo. And I spent three months in Firo. Why? I just wanted to understand Nigeria. Because Nestle walls, clean paint, security opens your door every day. Uh, Lunch time, you eat. There was a gym. There was hospital. So you did not have to interface with the real Nigeria. So guys, if you're living paid job in a structured environment, be sure you understand the journey on the other side. And so I immersed myself, and I, I think I, I understood a bit of Nigeria before you know, jumping out. But if you have to be there, you know, you're still in your career, please invent, reinvent, innovate, renovate yourself all the time. The company does not owe you anything to keep you if you are not delivering value. 
if you're not delivering value, you have to deliver value at the end of the day. And sometimes that person that asked about promotion, deliver a little bit plus. Deliver more than required. Be interested in how the company is working. I'm not saying you're in marketing, go and take on the job of supply chain manager, but for, for goodness, if, if I know what to benefit the supply chain person, I can walk up and say, you know, have you thought of this? Have you thought of that? If there is a meeting where, you know, supply chain is there, sales is there, and you have a good idea, share it to help the, your colleague. But add value whilst you're still there, reinvent yourself, upskill yourself, and if at any point you're not finding it interesting anymore, then look for somewhere else where you can express yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I'm handing over to Ife at this point. I think she has one or two questions uh, to close, but it's been a great honor and privilege um, speaking or anchoring this program. Over to you, Ife Olua. Well, thank you. I, th I think you have a job there. Maybe you should consider moonlighting in a radio station. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So thank you so much, Oluwale. Thank you. Really did very well. Thank you. And ma'am, one more question for you. Mm -hmm. And then I just got a nudge now. Somebody wants to gift you something. Oh, wow. One of our entrepreneurs in the house. <laughs> uh, but before then, <laughs> so, um, so the question is, do you um, just, okay, here it is, that says, um, when it's difficult, so how is this question crafted? It says, okay, do you have any ready-made example? So I think we've been enjoying your storytelling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so where it is difficult to separate two candidates based on competence. Mm -hmm. So what eventually decided the winner? Mm, it's, um, I mean, okay, again, I, I would go back to where I worked. It, it wasn't about... Um, it wasn't about um, winner or loser. Remember, I wouldn't at any point be the only person taking that decision. It usually is a team. And there'll be arguments for and against. Um, but trust me, if somebody is good in a system, even if you don't get that particular position, somebody is going to take, a, take note and might be willing to grab you into some other department. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 it happens. And, you know, something else which maybe I did not say at the beginning, there's a lot of, um, a lot of prayers <laughs> at the end of the day, trust me. Even in the journey of a career, um, some of those things I, I talked about, you know, because somebody said boldness. But, you know, for each of those things, I went into my closet, and I said, God, I'm going to ask it. I wrote it. I wrote it. I, I still have the, the paper. I wrote it. And I told God, I'm going to ask for this. So I had agreed with my God before going to open my mouth. I mean, if I <laughs> so there was, there's a force. There was a force behind me as I was opening my mouth. You know? So yes, a, a lot of things, trust me, can be done on your knees you know, to your God. Uh, to seek, you know, for guidance. But um, where two people are good, two people are good, one person could take that role then and somebody else would grab uh, the person for some other good role as well. Okay, thank you so very much, ma'am. And I'm sure the person who asked the question, I'm sure that is really satisfactory. Um, at this point, I would let the entrepreneur, um, uh, you know, he doesn't want to speak, but he can just show us what he wants to give, so we can then take your size afterwards. Okay. Um, please go ahead, um, CEO Mania. Are you still there? Oh, those, those look like Beckenstock, eh? Yes, so this is what oh, he wants wow. to give to you. That is interesting. <laughs> Becky, so, so, oh, you, you, know the, yes. you know the implication of this now. It means, you, you know, smart entrepreneur, you know what he has just done? Opportunity. Mm. He's hit on the, mm. the, the story of opportunity. Yeah. He heard this woman has over 100,000 mm. followers. 
I didn't quite see how many followers he has. Mm. So he knows that by the time mm. I collect this gift, I'm going to put it on my story <laughs> and I'm going to tag him. I'm going to say thank you, so 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 and so. Yes, good one, good one. You know, good one. That that's the way it works. I'm sure everybody. <laughs> you see, someone already picked a learning and is yeah. acting like almost immediately. So immediately, thank you so yes. very much, Absolutely. ma'am. So thank you, ma'am. <laughs> I'm I'm hoping uh, Musa Bulama. Would you like to just help us say thank you? A vote of thanks, please. Even if it's just one or two lines. <laughs> would you like? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Esther. Thank you, everyone. Uh, well, you know, if I say thank you, I will be very, very partial. Because to me, <laughs> I also tell you a story. <laughs> because we have also learned to share stories from, uh, from Mama. You know, why I said inspiring is, I will take us back to 15 years ago. In Nestle, then for you to become a manager, you have to undergo an interview. Mama, as marketing manager, nominated me as a candidate. Wow. <clears throat> on the day of the, of the interview, I arrived from Jos. I met her at the entrance to Nestle head office in Ilupeju. You know, so I was looking forward. How many mm -hmm. expo, how many did I get? But what Mama gave me was <laughs> an inspiration. Good morning, Ma. Good morning, Musa. Thank God you are here. Mm -hmm. She said, I hope your confidence level is high. I say very high, ma. She said the rest is now left for you because she answered, <laughs> you, go, you go and dig it. So at that moment, I knew that I have to, I have to deliver. I can't afford to disappoint her. Throughout the interview, mm. mama was looking at me. She did ask me one question, but uh, people like uh, Sir Pastor Oluaini, <laughs> And the other empties in Nestle were asking a lot of questions. <laughs> so I was just looking, she didn't really ask, and thank God at the end of the day, I didn't disappoint Mama. So on behalf of all the participants, a lot of us, uh, Doja has yes. spoken at the beginning, uh, why yes. I joined this <laughs> when I saw who the facilitator. From time to time, I will see Esther and Mary. They will say, uh, hang out with the industry giant. I say, Kai, I don't have time for this business worker. But this one, when I saw the when I saw the person, I said that this one is a must for me. So on behalf of all the participants, we thank you very much. And personally, I can say that in the last 18, 15 years, what Mama said, what we have been learning. So for us, it's like a breastfeeding baby that has come to the mother. This time around, not to be breastfed, but to be fed. So thank you very much, Ma. <laughs> and I hope that all of us have uh, taken the learnings and uh, it has refreshed our memories. It has happened sure. to a lot of us and uh, we continue to also remain grateful we continue to remain uh, loyal so thank you very much Esther. absolutely absolutely thank you so very much thank you and you've really done justice to the to, to the vote of thanks um so thank you ma'am honestly i'm not sure how to say uh, thank you enough and my phone is buzzing now people would like to connect with you um you better as well just add um a, a coaching um, outfit to enter <laughs> as, no as it looks like there no are still no more questions no from, um, everyone okay i'll just um send them your um okay well i would ask what contacts to give to them um, okay. after this meeting so thank you so much for honoring our invitation and for thank pouring you. out so much you know to i mean you it was on unrestrained you you shared with us you know, from the heart happen. because you want us to succeed yeah, yeah, because you want us to succeed. So thank you so much for uh, well, for doing this welcome. with us today. And thanks to everyone on the call. I salute you, um, Sir Oluayeni, and every other person that I've probably not noticed. Um, I'm sure you, I'll, you'll get all my thank you later. Uh, so have a great evening, everybody. And okay. um, if you'd like to join the WhatsApp platform, um, please just um, reach out to me or any one of the co-hosts, as you can see. And um, Please follow IQ Food Platter. Thank you. Thank you. And one, just one.
It's one Q food platter. I, I, I call it <laughs> one Q food platter, please. On Instagram and on Facebook. One Q. It's a one Q, yes. it's that and simple YouTube. food platter. Yes. And YouTube as well. And on YouTube too. YouTube, yes. Fantastic videos. I don't usually I get a prompt whenever you upload any any fresh yeah. ones. So just subscribe to our, I mean, the YouTube uh, channel also. Thank you so Thank very you. much, ma'am. And do have a great evening. Thank you. Salute, everybody. And see you next year. This yeah. is the last edition for the year. And then it's like a big cup on the year. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Cheers. Bye-bye.